Cigar Time, brought to you by Cigar Cigars, with seven convenient locations in Horsham, Colmar, Phoenixville, Oxford Valley, Reading, Westchester, and Freehold, New Jersey. Welcome to Cigar Time, the friendly show that teaches you all about cigars. Of course, we have to know something about it, too. We've been in the business a long, long time. Uh, before we get too far down the road, we want to thank everybody who's listened to us on radio all these very many months, and we appreciate you coming over to WMCN and seeing us and hearing us on TV. I'd like to introduce our panel right now. To my right is Rob. How you doing? To his right is John, or also known affectionately as Uncle Max. Hi, everybody. To his right, fresh from the field, is Paul. Hello. To his right is Mike. Hello, everybody. To his right is Scott. Hello. A lot of people to the right here, you notice. To Scott's right is the lovely Miss Tia. Hi, how are you? Who's also going to introduce our cigar for today. Our first cigar is going to be the Romeo y Julieta, the Reserva Real. The wrapper is an Ecuadorian Connecticut. The binder is a Nicaraguan. And the filter is a Dominican and Nicaraguan blend. The sizes are a Bellicoso, Churchill, Robusto, Corona, Lonsdale, Toro, and my favorite size, 6x60 Gordo. <laughs> the taste profile is rich, creamy with cedar, and sweet with a sweet spice. Very nice. like a good cigar. It does yeah. sound like a good cigar. We'll, yeah. we'll see it's at the Rob's end. Can't cigar. wait to smoke one. Well, yeah. that uh, was very, very informative. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm sure the panel shares uh, your Absolutely. knowledge. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, Such great pronunciation and wisdom. <laughs> yes. And it, was, it, it just went over really nice. Yes. Okay. Well, our, our first segment today is going to be how to cut and light a cigar. Okay. And I think uh, we might as well do that. Well, we yeah. might as well cut and light a cigar. Good. Apart here. We're, by the way, we are smoking the Romeo de Julieta yeah. Reserva Real. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're going to review it and talk about that later. Commence now, what I'm devices. doing is I'm going to just lick the cap oh, boy. and then punch the cigar. So now the next person that so uses the next that person punch uses gets that your punch tongue. Gets your I will tongue. disinfect it with alcohol. Not a problem. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks, T. Sorry, Don. I'm From so the mouths of babies. I'm so used to having my own gems. punch. I'm sharing today. You guys light it or not? I just we not talked yet. about punch cut it. I'm lighting mine. Okay. Thank I'm V cutting welcome. mine. So who's doing a guillotine cut? I did one. He did what I'm about to do one. And you did a V cut. I use a V cut. I'm doing a V cut. You press the cigar into the open jaws of the guillotine. Oh yeah. Or guillotine as you Americans pronounce it. And you squeeze in one rapid motion. And off with the head, as they used to say in Napoleon's time. Yeah, how much yeah. should you take off? I brushed a little bit. And, uh, oh, lighter, thank you. You're welcome. I will endeavor. First, you toast the foot of the cigar. I'm going to let Uncle Max tell you why you should toast the foot of the cigar. So that you don't get a uh, quick inhale of... Uh, and burn the end, you just want to get a little bit of uh, char before you start drawing on it. Max, why do you use a torch? I use a torch because the wind will blow too much uh, of a match and blow it out, and especially if you're outside. Especially windy in here, too. <clears throat> it is kind of, yeah. I, I like using a soft flame. Even though it's kind of hard to do it now, but I like using a soft flame. I do too. I think it. I, I think it doesn't burn. I think a torch changes yeah. the flavor. Of I the think cigar. it does too. I think I'm it burns too much of the cigar. I think it, it depends on how close you hold it. If you hold it far enough away, you'll get that nice white like ash. I feel like I'm welding the cigar. Yeah, I feel Why like not it's use the wooden matches? I mean, I don't see. Well, they do. Yeah, yeah, wooden matches are do. fine. If you're in a still environment, yeah, yeah, you can use you can use wood. How come none of you use or cedar strips? Because we don't have. Do we want to explain anything about the cutting, or do did we each just do the cut and that's that? Do you want to explain well, something? Explain. Yeah, explain. Well, the biggest mistake people make when they're cutting a cigar is they cut too much off. Mm -hmm. uh, that's especially true with the regular guillotine cutters. And what you really want to do is just cut off enough of the cap to let air flow through the cigar. One of the ways that people avoid cutting off too much is to use a V-cut which doesn't take the end of the cigar off at all. It just clips a small amount, a little notch in the end of the cap. And you can see oh. there's a little V right there or a cat's eye. 
my, my argument to the V cutter, although I have from time to time used it, I like to open up the whole head of the cigar. Yeah. Because if you aim the smoke as you're drawing on it, the smoke tends to go down the middle of the tongue. If you get a, a uh, heavy cigar, a cigar with a lot of lajero, you're going to get that little burn on the back of the tongue. I agree. Whereas a clean guillotine cut puts the smoke all over your tongue and on both sides, so it tends to smooth it out, at least in this man's opinion. Well, I like the V-cut better. I don't, it's clean. I don't, it, I don't like the, the, to open up that much. Well, it's a personal opinion. Is, and you get too much tobacco in your mouth. Oh, not from a good cigar like this. No. That's true, and I'm Uncle Max prefers a punch cut because uh, I like that straight draw, straight back. It's too and then, and but as I smoke it, the it will naturally open up a little more, and then as as I get into the cigar, I get the full flavor through the entire palate. I like using a punch cut because you don't get all the tobacco in your mouth. If you use a guillotine cut, you'll get a lot of tobacco, little bits and pieces on your tongue. Well, I think if you use a guillotine, um, if you do it cleanly and quickly, I think I most people see you guys pulling tobacco they hesitate. Not for me. Not me. They hesitate. The <laughs> thing, the thing that'll that'll disturb a cigar, two things: use a dull blade, mm -hmm. and not give it the quick cut. Mm -hmm. Off with the head. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're crushing it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then you get then you're tobacco punching it, and the little pieces are gonna are gonna fall out. And you people also crack what's left of the head too. Exactly. Right. People, people do cut yeah. too slow. Yeah, I, but you don't have to worry about that with a punch. I think it's a personal yeah. choice. Yeah, everything uh, about absolutely. cigar smoking yeah. is personal. Yeah, I mean, it's very subjective. It's whatever floats your boat, whatever, whatever you cut like you to like, do. as long as you smoke. As long as there, you smoke is right. There is one kind of cutter that you can not lose, not misplace. It's with you everywhere you go, and yes. it always your works. Teeth. <laughs> teeth. Yes. Yes. Or your assuming, fingernails. Assuming your fingernails. you have them. Assuming you have teeth, <laughs> yes. Well, in your case, that's a big assumption. I think. Now, now this, this, this is spoken uh, spoken by a man yeah. who smokes how many a day? Me, twelve. Uh, twelve a day for forty years. Uh, but but not every not all seven days. Well, sometimes on the weekend I smoke a little more. Uh, wow, is it true you get up? Uh, I that's heard crazy. You once you get up at one o'clock in the morning and have uh, a cigar. Between one and one thirty every morning, I get up. I have a cigar, a glass of wine, I go out on my deck, I contemplate the stars, I think shallow thoughts, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, and then I go right back to sleep. You do? Yeah. Wow. I'm usually up till one, so smoking a cigar. Yeah, right, exactly. I, I go to sleep around 11, and I wake back up at one to right. have a cigar. Well, I think uh, we covered cutting uh, pretty uh, much uh, mm -hmm. Do we want to talk about lighting or not? Well, we I did. think we, sh we did talk about lighting. We Were about we about toasting? Yeah. We talked about the, the comparison between here. the jet torch and the natural mm -hmm. flame. Okay. I think it's... Uh, well, the other, uh, actually, one thing we did talk about is I don't like letting the flame actually hit the cigar. Mm -hmm. I like... You hold it under the Rotating it underneath. There's just plenty of heat get there. there. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of heat to light the cigar. I mean, you'll, you'll see the flames, and the, the flame never even hits the cigar. Well, one thing... catch fire. If you ever think about this, if, uh, most people have uh, toasted marshmallows in a fire, yes. and you're toasting. Think about toasting a marshmallow. If you put the marshmallow right in a flame, it catches on fire and burns. If you're toasting it, you hold it away and let the heat toast it. You're doing the same thing when you light the cigar. You're toasting it, so you don't want it right in that flame. Good point. Well, all this has been very, very informative, and uh, I think our viewers at home have hopefully learned a lot from this. But now it's time to tell people who's bringing this show to you. This show is brought to you by Cigar Cigars with seven convenient locations Yay. around the Delaware Valley. <laughs> the stores are located in... Horsham, Colmar, Phoenix Oxford Valley, Valley, Oxford Valley, Reading, Westchester. Reading. Did we leave one out? Freehold, Free New Jersey. 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 Almost forgot you that. You Horsham? Seven Sorry, yes, I said Sorry about that. Colmar? I just said Colmar. Now, if you like this show and would like to learn a lot more about Cigar Cigars, just go to our website at cccigars.com. That's, That's double C C cigars. Cigars. Com. Oh, oh, boy. And we'll appreciate your patience. <laughs> and... On the website, there'll be a little box you can click off, and please send us your comments, criticism, suggestions, anything you want to recommend to us or critique. We're open to it. Are we not open to it? We are. Yeah. Don't forget to tell them to sign up for Facebook and our email list. Oh yeah, yeah. You can do it all. All that on the website. Sign up for Facebook. Sign up for Twitter. What else we got? Check out our hottie page. Check out our hottie page. Oh, we got and. 
Particularly, check out the Super Savers and Max Packs. A lot of money to be saved in those. Okay, I think uh, this is the part of the show where we uh, go to Paul in the field. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, Paul is going to start out, uh, since this is our first episode, he's going to start out with the beginning of the seed process. So, Paul, take it away. Okay. The first thing you probably ought to know is that tobacco seeds are tiny. They're smaller than a grain of sand. They're about a third of the size of a grain of sand. So a fistful of tobacco seeds is actually a huge number. Now, what's, once the seed is selected, what's done with the seed is they're put in little uh, mesh holders with the soil in them, a little soil medium, just like you would do flats of any plant. And they're planted in enormous quantities. A typical greenhouse on a tobacco plantation will have about 250,000 baby plants wow. under the greenhouse. Now, that, that only takes about two weeks. Within two weeks, you have small shoots, small plants, and it's time to put them in the ground. How big do they get when it's time to do that? It's about that big. Small, yeah. About how high? About like five inches? Not right? even. Not even? No, they're very small when you put them in the ground. Once they're in the ground, they grow extraordinarily fast. Tobacco is one of the hungriest plants there is. So within a couple of weeks, that plant will be a foot tall. Mm -hmm. Within a month, it's going to be between two and three feet tall. And by the time you get to three months out, that plant will be six feet high and ready to start. Uh, that's how harvest. fast they grow. You can harvest them after only 90 days. I wish I grew that fast. <laughs> That's almost fast enough to see it grow. Uh, well, if you wanted to sit out in the field all the time, which I love to do, you can sit out in the, out the That's field. That's my most productive time, sitting out in the field watching the plants grow. I thought I was watching snow melt. Well, that too. But, <laughs> but that doesn't happen much no, in Ecuador yeah. unless you go way up way in the mountains. It's like way watching up. golf. Oh. <laughs> it's more exciting than watching <laughs> golf. Oh. Like watching women's basketball. Once it's time like to harvest the, once it's time to harvest the tobacco, you don't just pick the plant, and you don't even just pick the leaves off the plant. The plant grows with pairs of leaves, usually six or eight pairs up the stalk of the plant. And what you do is, you pick two leaves off the bottom of the plant. You wait a few days. You pick two more leaves. You wait a few days because you don't want to shock the plant. And eventually, you work your way all the way up to the top. Now you have a whole lot of tobacco, and it's sorted by where on the plant it came from. And which area is called what, Paul? We're going to discuss that in a different episode. Oh, nice. nice. Uh, Got to have a cliffhanger. Yeah. But <laughs> what, what happens next with the tobacco is they tie usually 22 leaves at a time together with a piece of string or a little bit of nylon. And that's called a hand of tobacco. The hands are then tied to bamboo poles, and those poles are about 40 feet long. So two guys will then carry the poles into the aging barn where the tobacco will hang and dry and cure a little bit. Rob, this you, is, you actually, Rob, I actually saw Rob do that. I, you yeah, climbed, I, I you climbed, climbed up to, to the 50 top. feet yeah. out when we were in Honduras? Yeah, it was pretty, the, it was the, the barns are very tall. And, and very hot at the top. Very yeah. hot at the top. and. It's kind of interesting because there are little trap doors all over the walls of the barns. And depending on which direction the wind is blowing in, they'll open or close different ones of those trap doors to make sure the air circulates just the right way inside the, uh, the curing barn. But those poles have to be rotated every day. So if you had 20 rolls of these poles lined up all the way to the ceiling, each day, you'd have to take the pole from the bottom, and move it to the top, and move all the other poles down. So that over the course of time, the tobacco would be hanging at all those different heights with the different air and the different temperatures oh, at each wow. one. Very labor intensive. Sounds like it. After between 45 and 60 days, that tobacco that's been hanging in the barn will have lost all of its chlorophyll. It will no longer be green. It'll be a beautiful silky brown. And it's then time to take the tobacco out of the curing barn and pile it up for fermentation. Now, we're not going to go into fermentation until next time. <coughs> but 
it's important to know that that tobacco gets piled up into enormous piles, 2,500 pounds each. And Brian, I, you carried one of those piles, too. Yeah, by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Huh? Are you weren't there? It was 2,500 pounds. You I'm had kidding. a donkey with you, right? Wasn't he, would, there? he was afraid to climb was to he? the top. Yeah. I was afraid of falling. Chicken. One of, Actually, one I wasn't of, afraid of falling. I was afraid of hitting the ground. Yeah. Yeah. One of those 2,500-pound piles would make enough cigars for me to smoke in a day. I was about to say, I don't think so. Well, well Paul, that, that was very, very informative. And I, I, for one, can't wait to our next episode so you can explain a little bit more about this whole process. Well, thank you. I'm you're looking very, forward to it. Very welcome. As are we all. Mm -hmm. I think it's now time for us to review the Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real. I think Rob should start first. Yeah. He's what, 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 Rob to start? Uh, yes. Yes. Well, I will say, I will say this about Rob. He does religiously smoke one of these first things what, in the every morning. Every day, right? Every, every day. day. Every day. This is one of my favorite cigars. Uh, in the store. Um, it's got a great mild taste. It's got a nice spicy, cedary taste to it. Uh, almost vanilla uh, to my palate. Um, it burns perfectly. It's got a great wrapper. It uh, tastes fantastic. I, I smoke one every day. First thing I do when I walk in in the morning, before I even get something to drink, I light one of these up. I think it's a perfect cigar. Max? So. I love this cigar. I think it's a great smoke. I love the look. I love the feel. The taste in the mouth is absolutely phenomenal. And uh, as you can see, I'm smoking a Lonsdale. I like a, uh, a longer, thinner cigar early in the day. And then uh, I'll just enjoy this in at least for another 20, 30 minutes. Mr. Nice. Power Hitter? Well, funny you should say that. <laughs> this is one of the milder cigars out there, and yet it's got enough flavor and complexity to be interesting and a real pleasure to smoke. Absolutely. Yeah. Mike? And if you've listened to the radio show, you know I'm on a milder smoker. I like milder cigars, and this is perfect cigar. It, it, it's got great taste. It's mild. It's smooth. It's everything that I like in a cigar, so this is one of my favorite cigars, too. Scott? There's, there's nothing wrong with this cigar. It's creamy. Um, it's got some that sweet spice that uh, Tia described earlier. It's a fantastic cigar, especially in the morning. I'm going to be the bearer of bad news. Yeah. Oh. I think it has a little bit too much spice. It's overpowering my mouth, even going a little bit up in my nose, the spicy flavor. So it just turns me off. I don't like it like that. I like a little bit medium body with a sweet Maduro flavor. Well, so this one... Rapper? This wow. one. Yikes. Scott, oh, did, you, did you ask about the I guess it's of, my turn. Going out. It's terrible. I have to follow this now. Well, you know, it is a wonderful cigar in spite of what certain people say about it. It's got a beautiful Connecticut wrapper. It's got the right complexity for an all-day smoke. This cigar can be smoked at any time. And as those who, who listen to us on the radio know, that I have this, you know, price, value, quality quotient. And this rings all the bells. It's moderately, modestly, I should say, priced. It's great quality, well-constructed, beautiful-looking cigar. And, of course, it has a great heritage to it, Romeo and Julieta. So, you know, I love this cigar. So I guess we're uh, time yeah, to we're give We're going to rate it. Well, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. Time to put a number on it. Give me a chance here. Can I go first? <laughs> by the way, I, so want everybody, I want everybody to understand this is our first TV show, and uh, we although know you may we think it, none of us are professional actors. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, matter of fact, one, one of us, us are. Well, us, some, of us, some of us have been told that we have faces for radio, so I, I won't go so Rob's a professional. Rob's a professional. Oh, I forgot. Rob is a, yes, uh, he has been a star of many, many movies, yeah, and, yeah. and is on a first name basis with uh, most of the people in the internet movie database. So. Yeah, that's true. And, and, he's, and he's infamous. I mean, he, thanks. He's infamous. Infamous. thanks, Mike. On All right, we'll start with the. Uh, I don't know why we should start with her on this one, but lovely we're going to start with the lovely Miss Tia on the uh, rating. 2.5. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. We should, with, That's actually, true. before we continue rating, we should explain that this is on a scale of 1 to 5. Yes, not, one, not to, one, 1 to 5 ten. cigars. So I give it a 2.5. I, I like the cigar a lot. Um, I would give it a 4.25. Mike? I'm giving it a 4.75. Ooh, wow. Very I'll good. Go four. Go high? Paul? I'll go high. Who likes it? I'd give it a straight four, a solid four. I'll give it a four and a half. 
Uh, I'm with Mike, 475. Yeah, I, as for me, I mean, it just rings too many bells for me. I go with the 475. It's a great cigar. Yeah. You know what I realize as we were going through these ratings that all of Philadelphia is starting to realize is that they must be jealous. We, we all talked about the first thing we do was come into work. We mm -hmm. light a cigar. Yeah. 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 Who gets to <laughs> do yeah, that who gets, one? Yeah, who gets cigar yeah, but we, most work. of us still have to drive to work, so yeah. it isn't all just fun. Well, he we have to drive, drive the then way. we have to yeah. walk up some steps and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's, hard it's, hard it's hard work. It's hard work. Do you know how they got the name Romeo and Juliana? I'm Juliet. going to guess Shakespeare had something to do with it. It is Shakespeare. That's correct. The Torsi doors are the people right. who um, talk to the rollers mm -hmm. uh, That's the while they're rolling. The lectors. Le 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 they're also called Torsi doors. The no, the Torsi doors are the rollers. I thought they were the lectors. No, the lectors are the ones who talk. I saw them in Cuba. Oh, there you go. There's my credibility. But anyway. He's our actor. They're what kind of He's our professional. Yeah, yeah. One yeah, of their favorite um, stories was Romeo and Juliet by uh, William Shakespeare. So they Even named the cigar Even though the story, after. the story itself is not a real happy story. It is not. That is true. It's kind of a sad story, actually. It is. But unlike the real story, this is not a sad story at all. And actually, they make a love story, ironically. They do. Uh, Tia that's smoking. That's what Tia is smoking. Well, Tia, yes, I'm smoking. That's what Tia is not smoking. That's what Tia put out. By the way, I don't know if anybody noticed how she put it out. I know yeah. you did it for dramatic effect. I did it for dramatic effect, Do not. Yes. Do, not ever do, do, do not ever do that. Do not. Do not. Just always not place ever it. Do just let it. In the, yes. Let, let it put itself out. out. Let it go out. That. But I, I had to, you know, you, smash it down. You mentioned about the... I just want to elaborate you mentioned the beautiful Connecticut wrapper on this and I think it's worth knowing that this is not a Connecticut Connecticut wrapper Ecuadorian this is an yeah. Ecuadorian yeah. Connecticut. Connecticut. but it, 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 it's it's I got that there's lovely a different, there's a different shape. It's a different taste. Oh, it, it, different it is taste. a different taste. Paul has a real affinity like to real I, affinity to Ecuador. Any time he gets to point it out, he will do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, but it's an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. Thank you. But that's important because it it Ecuador didn't come from the Connecticut Valley. That's not why it's important. It's important because Ecuadorian Connecticut is less fragile yeah. than Connecticut, yeah. Connecticut, and it has a little bit less of a grassy taste to it, which is why today 80% of the Connecticut wrappers on cigars come from Ecuador. Well, that's why you're on the panel. That was a yeah. fun yeah. fact. Yeah, because yeah, fun you're, facts. you're our man in the field. field. Mm -hmm. that's it. It, the soil in it? Ecuador, I think Paul would agree, is more nutrient rich uh, Volcanoes because, all of, the, yeah, because of the volcanic ash, yeah. uh, soil that it's come from. Not too many uh, volcanoes in Connecticut. Not, not anymore. Not, not lately. No. <laughs> there were. Well, there's a valley. It is a valley. But so, the, so there's water. Water. <laughs> nutrients roll down the hills. And no, the but the original uh, uh, soil from Connecticut was when the the the, uh, the plate no the plates the were moving plates. and it smashed into the North American continent and that created the uh, the Island. mountains <laughs> among other things uh, the mountain range that runs from uh, Canada did you take pictures of this yes when you were there? Did you <laughs> yeah. yes yeah. I you was there, there. you saw the whole thing happen no I mean when it happened <laughs> yes <laughs> no, of course. But that's what created the the soil over many millennia. Wow, that's millennia. very impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I uh, thank you very much for that long-winded explanation <laughs> of things. Are we surprised you got that way? I kind of forgot where we are here anywhere. I'm I was this, over here sleeping. I'm on this like oh, travel, oh, 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 oh. This travel guide right. here. Totally uncalled for, man. Hey, I just want to. I just want to. I just want to take a minute, and uh, since this show will be airing late in October. I want to thank all of you who are participate, who did participate in our Big Ash Bash held on the 12th. Yeah. It was a tremendous turnout. There were tremendous cigars given out and smoke, tons of swag, tons of raffle prizes, and you know we're looking to do it even bigger and better next year. Don't forget our cigar babes. Oh, oh, yeah. I, oh well, why don't you tell everybody about our cigar babes? Well, we just hired three new cigar babes. You can always see them at the Colmar store, Horsham store. Uh, maybe sometimes Phoenixville and events. Westchester. And Definitely at events. The they hot will, TS. The hot TS. Yeah. They will always <laughs> be there. They'll be cutting, lighting your cigar, pouring your drinks, making sure your ashtrays are empty, giving you great conversations. So come down to our stores and check it out. 
Are these the, uh, the same Jersey girls either. will be wearing those uniforms you picked out that oh, are about this you long? Oh, see the uniforms. <laughs> oh, Gorgeous. They're about this long, right? Yes. Yeah. About, Top about, half only. Yeah. Yeah. Family it, show. Isn't one of the one gals about six foot two? Yeah, she's six Guys, one. there's kids in the audience so look, look, oh, looking yeah. to look this cigars. This is definitely Wait, a family if you, hour. Right? If you're under oh, 18, you can't cigars. watch cigars. You can watch this. This is promoting smoking. Are you well, really no, we're not. He's not joking. Once again, this is all good, good information, and you know, since this is all new to us, it's also new to our audience. Yes. So I That's think uh, in our closing few minutes, I think we ought to talk about where our stores are, the hours of our stores, and talk about the lounges. Hmm. I think Scott would be a good person to talk about. I'll start that. off with the hours. Colmar's never closed. <laughs> That's <laughs> basically <laughs> true. Technically, we yeah. open at eight in the morning, um, and we close at nine, but. Uh, well, nine we're at night, all, I guess. Nine at night, yeah. and we're always, there's always somebody there until 10. And we have a, a huge members lounge um, with 24-hour access. In fact, most of our stores have lounges with 24-hour access, and it's located on 309. And uh, Horsham, Horsham opens at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. morning, yeah. You had to beat me. Yeah, Six yeah, o'clock. Had, had been doing that for years and yeah. years and years before Colmar even opened. Yeah, the, bre true. the Breakfast Club happens right here. Yeah, the yes, Cigar Cigars Breakfast Club. That's true. But Most we have of, two shifts. Yeah, that's true. Most of our stores are open from ten in the morning till eight or nine at night. And shorter hours on Sunday, eleven to five, in, in most of the areas. And uh, football season here. And football season's here. The lounges stay open for football games and the like. And we really would like to see you drop in. Give us a shot. Try us out. We've been around a long, long time, but not all of you have been in one of the Scar Cigar stores. So please give us a shout out. Check our web page. Kind of take a look and see what we got. And uh, you'll be happy you did. And the, and the people that work, the, the greatest thing about the lounges is the other people. I mean, we've got the, the customers oh, yeah. really make it. I mean, it's just a really, really fun bunch of people. Um, and then unlike us. Unlike us. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll get to us. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I think we pride ourselves on is we're very honest with the customers. If, if, we, if somebody specifically asks us about a cigar, we will give them the honest truth. And, you know, as Tia, yeah, whether we like them or not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we will tell you the truth. We are not going to try to sell you something that you don't want. Um, and most, uh, most of our people are very educated. Um, and they, they know a lot about cigars. Except for Rob, no. I'm just playing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's not a fact. That is well, not a fact. looking at the old clock on the desk, <laughs> it's getting pretty close to saying goodbye. This has been a, a blast. We've had a great time. We're hoping you'll tune in every Tuesday night at 7.30, following yeah. Community with Chevy Chase. Give them a plug. I guess they need it. And I think one by one, we ought to kind of say goodbye. So, on behalf of the panel, which will say goodbye themselves, let's go around the table. Bye-bye for now. Adios. See everybody uh, next week. Smoke often and smoke happy. Drive safely, be well, and remember, it's just another beautiful day in paradise. <laughs> Ciao, everybody. On behalf of Cigars Cigars, thank you for viewing. And once again, please go to our website at cccigars.com. That's DoubleZCigars.com Thank you. Cigar Time, brought to you by Cigar Cigars, with seven convenient locations in Horsham, Colmar, Phoenixville, Oxford Valley, Reading, Westchester, and Freehold, New Jersey.